anything that you wanted to ask me before we start, before I give you the sort of um, overview of, of what's... No, to be honest. And cool. you feel free to ask me what you like. Cool. And then... As you're aware, this is part of our um, Black Activism um, edition. Um, and really, the, the, the main premise is to really allow uh, the layman, um, or should I say the mainstream, about, yeah. um, our community, who really um, we're trying to, um, in a sense, win over or raise or heighten their consciousness. It's really to give them access and understanding so that Absolutely. they can actually participate, you know, so they can actually participate in this um, process. Let's start with your definition. So, so bearing in mind who we are um, targeting, what would be your best definition of activism, whether that be um, an original um, definition that you've come up with yourself or an adopted definition uh, that you feel um, accurately reflects uh, the term within the, within the context of Pan-Africanism, I mean. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't, first of all, I don't think there's anything new under the sun. And I think we create so much division amongst us. My bigger picture thinking just connects all of the functional elements. So I am a Pan-Africanist. Um, I think that powernomics is what the practical implementation of our, of our Pan-Africanism looks like in the West. And it's evident in what other ethnicities have accomplished. So if we look at the fact that Pakistanis are very organized in what they have done, and there's a Habib Bank in the city, and there are multiple branches of the Habib Bank, it's evident. And that also engages them with their country of origin. If we look at the Jewish community, you can go into Greenland and you can see a bank of Cyprus. You can see a bank of Turkey because we're not a color. Our ethnicity is about our origins. So when I look at the examples, powernomics, which is the, be is, which is the principles of organizational structure that APAC is based on. But then I have to look at what doesn't work for Americans. So then the ethical principles of ADPAC are the principles of Kwanzaa. Mm. So now, as we have the strategic advisory committee, that is the moral fiber that ADPAC requires. Mm -hmm. This is like a civil service, but is really like our diplomatic core. It's like our ethical core. And it advises the directors who will come from corporate backgrounds. So director of education, economics, justice, housing, health, media, trade and industry. So where they may veer left, the strategic advisory committee just bring them right back to center mm -hmm. with yeah, accountability. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it is, it's, it's not about terms anymore because we get so caught up in the optics mm -hmm. that we forget about the most important part, which is the function. So I can say breakfast is breakfast time as we wake up every morning, but there's no food in the kitchen. So we're not actually eating before we leave the house. And because we've been saying it's breakfast time for a year, we just get up at breakfast time and leave. Now, breakfast is to eat and sustain yourself before the day starts. So where we are is we're just getting up at breakfast time, but not eating and leaving. Yeah. And because of that, we're weak. I think with you saying that, um, Odin, I, I think... it's still a matter of duty and responsibility that um, whilst the apparatus and the structures are in place, um, that we don't- Make it palatable in marketable terms. But, neglect, but just don't neglect, you know, in, in, in um, focusing on the detail of the structure and apparatus. Yeah. You're never losing sight of who those apparatus and structures are in place for. Absolutely. No. And, and you just shifted my mind. 
I, I, I do have one and I've been using it for the past six months. It's the African Carib APAC is the African Caribbean Recon Economic Reconstruction. So that economic reconstruction is something that actually above your religion, above your tribe, above your class, is that we all need greater socioeconomic mobility. So that African Caribbean economic reconstruction is actually very faint in the background of every single meme that I've put out for the last six months, because it is that subconscious thing. It's in the background. What is in the background is economic, African Caribbean economic reconstruction. So anybody who agrees, disagrees with that is clearly not for the advancement of our people in the United Kingdom. And that's why we have the We Matter campaign, which yeah. is the thunderclap, so we can get them. Because anytime anybody veers to actually get in our way, We'll just send a hundred people after you, day, date, and hour. You are accountable to your community. Mm -hmm. And we will coordinate that Thunderclap campaign with all of our owned media that we identified when we did a media, a, an African Caribbean owned media audit. But it's not even national, it's international. We got them in France, Germany, Belgium, the States, mm -hmm. um, Brazil. So globally, mm -hmm. we did a media audit of African origin owned media sources yeah. that we will align with every time we do a thunderclap. So we are globally coordinated mm -hmm. in who we target. You are accountable. So if Tony Saul thought it was hot for him, we weren't organized one day. <laughs> the yeah. heat that will come for anybody will make what our Yiddish brothers and sisters look like a walk in the park. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and therein lies the strength. But um, just to just to again, like because there are, and I, and I think we've kind of had this conversation before, where there, there are different levels of entry. Absolutely. Uh, consciousness. Yeah, you know, yeah. The concept of consciousness. There are different entry points. The vast majority just aren't at a place where, in terms of the practical framework, um, uh, really taking its cue. From poweronomics in terms of the ethical principles taking its cue from absolutely consciousness. the majority of people are, are, are not at that level of consciousness Do you get okay what I'm so here's the thing here's the thing a cabal of men and women mm. sat down from the labor party and from the health industry and decided that after the Second World War, they wanted free health care okay. for the entire nation, irrespective of the public's understanding of how to cure illnesses, how to sanitize operations, all irrelevant. What was of all importance was that the NHS was built by capable and willing people who then had to pass the policy to actually create that entity so that it served the entire nation free. Now, I can't tell you today off the top of my head without doing research, who were the architects of the NHS? But the truth is nobody cares. And it requires no terms to get somebody who's been hit by a car into the hospital. So here's my thing, build it, demonstrate in service, in the interviews that we're conducting right like now, this is for delivery partners, stakeholders, early adopters as members. And what you do is you build up a critical mass of like-minded people, similar ilk. So you've identified your tribe and you, it's, not, it's not my job to convince the masses. It's not your job to convince the masses. It's down to that critical mass that we create to then influence the masses. My job and your job okay. is to influence the influencers. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's fair enough. That Our sense. job is to influence 500 people mm. who, as you would agree, your husband, men like your husband, men like myself, lay people would say fanatical. We would say, no, we become the algorithms of our nation so that we can become part of the systems 
that actually function for and on their behalf. So those 500 who become, let's say, brand evangelists are the ones who carry the message. Mm. They carry the message and make it palatable. And that's another reason we have the We Matter campaign, because we're not a monolith. So if we were talking about, for instance, observing our Holocaust Day in Trafalgar Square, we want the entire nation, the African Caribbean nation inside of Britain, to be behind it, bar none. And then it's easy to identify those who aren't our allies and our family. Now, when we come behind it universally, there's no way that the mayor can turn it down. The tactic we use to do that is to record a hundred influencers with their two minute videos and release those two minute videos, day, date and hour. Now, they all belong to different tribes and how they convey their message is nuanced. But the important thing they're saying is observe the Holocaust of our ancestors so it never happens again because we're susceptible to the same common fate. Yeah, OK. I mean, yes. Um, and, and I recognise that um, in terms of the approach um, and, and the strategy and the means by which you disseminate um, the message and the means by which the influencers um, are able to speak in that nuanced tone to their yeah. um, stroke community. Um, I think I'm not going to labour on this too much because of the other questions, but I think... Um, The distinction that I would make, you know, because obviously you you use the, um, you refer to, you kind of referenced or used the analogy of the NHS. Yeah. I think it's also about, the, 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 there's a part that comes before that or a um, fundamental principle um, or agreed understanding that is required before that. And that is around need, you know, Absolutely. Um, the, 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 the whole point of um, addressing why um, build the NHS. Why exactly. Have yeah, yeah. An entity such as ADPAC and so on. Um, and in the NHS example, um, there was a very, very clear need because of what had happened in very recent history. Yeah. And what it meant economically um, for uh, the nation and so on and so forth. Yeah. I think... I, I just wonder if it's um, as easy to convey convey um, the need and the why, um, especially when it almost appears to be ideological for most. And I say for most because, like I said, the, the majority, the vast majority in the mainstream, um, I don't <coughs> hold that position um, of recognising the why. You know, we've had instances, uh, because if, if you think about it, if you look at um, uh, historically um, and you try and map um, the peaks and troughs of consciousness or events that have provoked consciousness in, 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 mm -hmm. in the global black community, we always seem to come back to this default position where Absolutely. we are comfortable um, and we accept um, the um, appeasements and we accept... Um, being assuaged uh, for any concerns that we have um, by show of, you know, representation in, in media advertising or whatever it may be that makes us then feel comfortable um, to, uh, rather than um, dissent, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just, just accept. So um, th there's that piece for me around there that I, I just... Um, I fully concur. I think also, yeah, also needs to be sort of taken into account because... Even the 500, uh, you know, the, the, these core evangelists as well. Um, like you said, we're not a monolith. So I just wonder, um, I'm sure you've got a very, very robust selection criteria and process in place um, in which you kind of um, identify these people. Mm -hmm. I think um, a lot of the good intentions and the good work uh, that, that is supposed to go forth can actually be retarded or delayed. The, the concern is, is that to whom much is given in this instance, much is required. And I think- Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a very fragile and, and, and delicate commission um, that you actually, and responsibility um, that is given out. And I know that it's not done lightly. Um, let, me, let me lay it out for you. 
because yeah. it's, it's, your, your, your question is quite expansive, as is the answer, but I'm going to give you in the most succinct form. Mm. So my political journey started at 18 when I joined Panther UK, when Stephen Lawrence was murdered. I had a formal political education through Panther UK between 18 and 20. So although I may have been selling marijuana, stolen goods, pirates and adult videos, I was also receiving a political education, speaking every week at the Brixton Rec, SOAS, and Hammersmith and West College giving lectures. So that dichotomy of those worlds gave me a very unique understanding. Then I became interested solely in business and it became a thing of forget the world and save the self because people don't listen. However, in 2016, when the proliferation of African-American assassinations by police became so untenable for me, I decided to stop hiding and said that, you know what? It requires someone to come above the parapet. You understand the factors. So I joined, I must have been part of 140 WhatsApp groups and active. There were no green ticks. I lived in it. So it enabled me to become a human algorithm of our needs. I know where we were stuck in rhetoric. I know what our capabilities are. I know what they're not. I know what our complaints are. I know what the appetite for our solutions were. And I had the same amount in Facebook as well. Knowing that over the course of, let's say, four years, being heavily active in that, and then speaking around the country, then doing the same on LinkedIn, and taking people out to dinner three, four times a week, solution providers I'm talking about now. So assessing the problem, but mm -hmm. also meeting physically, forming relationships with solution providers. Mm -hmm. What I'd had was a think tank that led me to the conclusion that it requires an institution because every single day, what I started to do was connect solution providers if you phone me and you ask for a person, be it a solicitor, an accountant, um, a professional in any industry, banking, education, I, I was just connecting people mm. to my living, breathing network. And then it became overwhelming. And I said, this is too much for an individual. This requires an institution. Now, fast forward to last year when George Floyd was murdered in such a callous way we don't have white problems so we don't need to ask about the necessity of an ad pack ad pack provides cohesion which lasts for generations the reason we go through troughs and peaks is because when we are hot and we're invigorated we march when we come down from marching we go right back to work or right back to signing on or right back to standing outside the off license so we don't have white problems I pray white people are there complaining about whatever. I pray for white problems. So as I used to make this joke. When me and my brothers were in our shop, our biggest problem of the day was deciding what we wanted for lunch. I said, I love white problems. We have very clearly identifiable problems that are practical. So providing the solution is just like providing the NHS. People will come. This is why what we're saying at this time resonates so much with the brand evangelists and their job is to convert the masses. I'm neither a converter of man nor woman. I was on a live last night with a young lady who says she's not interested in politics. She's not interested in the institutional economic unions. Um, that's all part of capitalism and the system she doesn't care about. So opt out. Okay. And then I go on to say what I say. I'm no longer talking to you now. I've extrapolated you from the equation. I am now talking to the tribe who desire the solutions. You're not my enemy. You're not in my way. And I'm not fighting you. If you are happy, I am happy. I don't know how that translates for your life and what it looks like in practical terms. But I'm happy that you're happy. I'm neither a converter of man nor woman. Mm. The tribe are aligning at an exponential rate, which is a spiritual quickening that connects people like me and you. 
everything I can tell you right now, you experience exactly the same as me. Every time you come into contact with somebody, you're pushing on an open door and they couldn't be more helpful in providing the solutions that you require. Mm. I know. That is the tribe that I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me go on to the next question. Um, you, to what ex well, you kind of answered that already. So let me move on to question three, just as a time. So you can answer it. It might need a little bit more clarity, and I won't be long-winded. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going to say, to what extent um, has your life so far been guided by the um, idea or the notion of activism that's that's actually a great question and i'm glad you asked it because when i said i was hiding and i was running a business it doesn't mean that i wasn't dealing with my form of activism so as i would come across young men all of the time because of who i am i would just form relationships i had a clothes shop for 11 years a men's clothes shop so when i took to young men's spirits and i invested in them I created a folder called success that had a lot of different audio books, teachings. And then I wrote out how to use I, what I do. I go and buy a 64 gigabyte key drive, put all of those things on the key drive, write out the book, exactly how to use the teachings. And then I would gift them outfits for the professional world. That was the investment I was making in them. Mm -hmm. So when you go in a room, you're not going to be embarrassed in a corporate environment, 17, 18 to whatever. They, some of them could be in their 40s, but I could see the means weren't there. But I could see they were worth investing in as people. Now, I did that over the course of 11 years. I've lost count of how many, like I've forgotten and I will run into someone and they will remind me. Yeah. So wherever you are, whatever tools you have, you can pass on. Don't feel there's some um, magical, majestical day where the sky is going to turn lilac and a booming voice is going to point to you out of the sky and say, today is the day. Mm -hmm. It's what you practice Monday through Sunday and remain consistent in mm -hmm. that actually enables you to get to this level now where you can become that project manager. And even where I am in the, as, a, as a project managing director in ADPAC, I started that five years ago in the solution room where I was incompetent and lost people based on my incompetence. So it was still a five year journey from then. Yeah. No, that's really, I'm, I'm glad that we returned to that question. Thank you for that. Um, so how important is activism to the black nation building agenda, would you say? I think for those who is an embedded part of their DNA is highly important. My, I, th I think it is just part of who you are innately. My advice is... Oh, really? Okay, I'm going to come back to that. Yeah. My, my advice... And, and it's, a, it's a screaming voice. They may not have found the outlet for their particular skill set. So my advice is identify mentors who've accomplished what you desire to accomplish and identify your tribe. When you identify your tribe, collaborate and be open. Don't be closed to getting hurt. Don't be closed mm. to learning. If you're close to your feelings getting hurt, you are close to learning. If you're close to learning, you will not be qualified. I promise you. And you will isolate yourself. And I have to look at the biggest influence on my life, who was Malcolm X. He was qualified to the degree that he was qualified. Now, when you look at the innate part that Europeans implant their malware in our operating system, mm. as I watch interviews with Malcolm X on European TV platforms, I see the malware was so firmly planted he had a very important saying, when Europeans celebrate you and lift you up and put you on a pedestal, you are doing something wrong. Now, when they said, we're glad you've apologized and you've changed your mind and you've left the nation and disagree with that. And he smiled. And I said, my teacher, my brother, they got you. We are discussing family business 
with our adversary. That family business could just have easily have been conveyed in the Audubon ballroom where you had the masses of your local family. So for this reason, I don't speak on European TV platforms. Now, I would speak on Al Jazeera and I would speak on um, the RT. But this is because my enemy's enemy is my man. And I know that my adversaries are more embarrassed by what their adversaries think than what we think as victims. So for me to go on Al Jazeera or RT, number one, I'm going to create exponential awareness of my organization. Number two, those who are our distant cousins who have empathy will donate and they will donate a lot more, unfortunately, than we will. Okay. And number three, it will nationally embarrass my adversaries. Mm -hmm. So I'm very clear about that. So ADPAC has particular policies for a reason, but then we also work behind the scenes as we're establishing our news outlet the diaspora wire so that we have a consistent and cohesive news that has an international capability based on the media audit we did of African origin owned businesses globally so that we have correspondence globally to feed our news entity. Just want to go back to what you said about um, the activism being a, an innate part of you. Yeah. Can you, just literally in like a minute or so try and unpack that a bit absolutely okay some people will watch a video of a fellow african being murdered and be so disgusted they turn it off they bury their head in the sand and they go right back to work and then they would hide from the conversation with all of the europeans this is not for you i'm not talking to you there's nothing wrong with you I identify you as a beneficiary, no problem. Then you have somebody who will get angry, rant and rave, and desire to convert the entire world to Pan-African militarism in the moment. Nothing wrong with you. You lie in the middle and you are someone who requires the education to bring them to the point of clarity so that you are no longer angry. Then there's somebody who watches it, like Shireen Daniels, who is an HR professional and just decided that I'm going to use my talent of connecting people in the professional world to create a platform of having conversations about race. African origin people, Europeans, Asians, across the board. And we are at the center and we are, and she is speaking as an African woman. Fantastic. She had activism at her core for many years. It may not have been called upon. It may have been dormant, but the screaming voice was always there. Then because she created the platform, her tribe was attracted to her exponentially and the outlet that she provided not only attracted her tribe, not only created conversations between all ethnicities and African people, but created empathy around us based on our humanity. So she may have started off angry as we start off angry. She came to a position of clarity. She identified her tribe and she put out a call to action. So now the conclusion of that is a conference in September that then goes out to inform the masses based on people like me and all the other advocates that will be on that panel that just like I'm talking about in ADPAC. So when I identify somebody in their entity, it's not join my organization, we are ADPAC. They say, no, as you join my organization, I am also a member of the Black Knowledge Society. So when you think, why is this guy so amenable to anything I ask? You are me and I am you. Your organization is my organization and my organization is your organization. And we put that into legion with all of them. So it's just about finding your outlet. You can bury your head in the sand. You can be angry, but you're not beneficial to our movement. Find your tribe, find mentors and find that center ground 
that keeps you grounded and makes you functional as a purposeful contributor to our movement. Just on that then, um, as a, as a, just as a general assessment, where, where do you feel that the bulk of our community is? Right in the middle. Ang- angry for 48 hours and getting right back to work. Um, what it is, you have a hard left. Mm. You have a hard left, which let's say is 5%. You have a huge centre ground which is, let's say, upwards of 60%. And they blow where the wind goes. Um, I think they're so malleable. And I don't think there's anything more than being told to take your vitamins that proves that. So as this global um, phenomenon started, which is designed from Davos, no problem, very well coordinated, fantastic. I think we don't need any more than the phenomenon of this global reset to show us what our population looks like. So those who would have purported to have led our community that are taking photos of them taking their vitamins in line with what the state and what the shadow state desires them to do to inculcate us into taking our vitamins I think is a clear picture of what our community looks like. Mm -hmm. So there are those who make so much noise. Don't take it. Don't take, I don't say a word because I just have to show you evidence from, from the mainstream. I can show you a sky news report, 122nd report, two minutes that says statistics were manipulated based on someone who had it and then passed off cancer but it was recorded as a COVID death. I don't need to convince you of anything. So I put that out with my media. I put somebody out who's shaking uncontrollably with nerve damage the day after taking it. I don't need to say a word. I've got the doctors that tell you. So when they're saying this isn't an experimental drug, I don't need to say a word because the FDA come out and say that, but it's just not on wide media. Mm. So all I have to do is compile facts. No angry fashion, no screaming to convert you. For the people who desire to be saved, we say, hey, this is the life raft. Get mm-hmm. on. Shh. Don't tip it over. Yeah. For you who would run from the boat and act crazy in the raft, panicking, you're just going to tip it over. This global reset is the new natural selection, unfortunately. And our people are identifying ourselves. The victims are identifying themselves. The collaborators are identifying themselves. And the resistant people are identifying themselves. And then there are those who are providing solutions who are nominal. And those are the people I call delivery partners. Mm -hmm. So I identified that these people are beneficiaries. No problem. I'm not speaking to you at this juncture. I'm speaking to the contributors. They are the delivery partners. Yeah. Okay. Why do you believe that the word activism has received a bad press historically? What's your kind of take on it? Why do you you feel that that term has really been maligned um, for such a long time? So let's put it at a nation level. Britain as a very powerful, tiny nation, punches well above its weight. It, based on the brutality of its royals, controlling armies, they would go into nations and acquire wealth. Now, based on that wealth, they could have systems and structures that were very powerful. So when Britain invaded Ireland, there was a famine. Men, women, and children were murdered, Women and children were raped, possibly men as well, which is a tactic of soldiers to use as a humiliation. 400 years of that, you know, we weren't the first. They experimented on their own before they did it to us. Only there was no such concept as white races created. At a point, the Irish said no more and formed the Irish Republican Army, which was to resist 
the occupation of the British army and the brutality that the British army put on the Irish people. Now, it was very easy controlling all of the media and the powerful structures that Britain had to malign the Irish Republican army who was resisting British occupation. In a similar way, that is easy for the newly formed nation of Israel to malign the PLO who were resisting occupation and growth of that occupation, inviting back their diaspora into territories which were already inhabited. So when you look at those in the 1% who have all of the resources, who are controlling brutal forces to create occupation, they have to malign activism. Now, the same way that they invaded our continent and we fought and we lost a war, a war which hasn't stopped, a war which is ongoing, anytime we become active and organized, they have to malign it when they see it working. So you can take the base elements of a Black Lives Matter in the United States to malign us because we as a people don't even agree, agree with the people with the founders politics so anytime we become organized they malign it and that is how you know what is being done in terms of the tactics and strategies is effective the more fuss they kick up the more we are on the right track but let's not scream so much let's have more board meetings and as the board meetings create entities and initiatives then we have town halls then we have marches to bring people into all of the entities to volunteer. So what is a form of activism that you feel that people can actually begin to engage in, bearing in mind um, the characterization um, that you um, gave earlier um, about the, um, those who are angry and, and kind of occupy that centre ground? Because like you said, those who are um, deciding to pull the shutters down and not really engage... Um, this isn't really a conversation for them. So um, for those who occupy that centre ground. Yeah. What can so they the most powerful form of activism you can form at the embryonic stages is education. So I'm not even going to ask you to read a book. Go to the greatest university on earth, YouTube, and listen to audio books in your free time. All of the books that we talk about, Walter Rodney, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, Malcolm X, um, a myriad of books have been recorded as audio books, Leaderless Revolution. I could give you a number of books. They're all on YouTube as audio books. All you have to do is listen and educate yourself. What will happen is your God voice will start to resonate at a much higher vibration. The more that God voice violates at a high vibration, the more you will attract your tribe, who you'll find by some bizarre coincidence are doing exactly the same thing that you're doing. When you realize that space, then you start to become qualified to actually be active. Otherwise, uninformed, uneducated, you're, just, you're a clear liability to yourself and you're more of a liability to the entity that you're seeking to take part with. So education is the greatest revolutionary act you can commit at this time. And then in your own partner that mirrors your ideologies, ethics and principles, and then your friends and your circle that mirror your ideology principles. And it's, it, for me, it's that simple. People like to convolute it and make it very complex. I find that the most functional solutions are the simplest. Absolutely. There is so much that, that seeks to distract us. There is so much that seeks to tell us that um, it's all in our heads, you know, that we're Absolutely. doing things. Absolutely. So here's what I'd say quite simply. Um, the rapist will always tell the rape victim that it was okay, nothing happened here. And if you think that's acceptable, um, that's fine, keep it moving. And if you're watching this and you don't find it acceptable, for the rapist to tell the rape victim how they should respond, what they should feel, what their next action should be. Ask yourself this fundamental question. 
what am I worth? What is the value of currency for an African life? And why should I accept to be lesser than anybody else? Now let me tap into my God voice. Knowing that I am worth a hell of a lot to me. Now I start to look at my brothers and sisters and their life value escalates. Well, now what should I do? Now, if I'm a rape victim, I have to get this guy out of here before he does it again, right? So that is to report it to police if that's not your way. And it's street justice. Tell your brothers, tell your family members, tell your male friends. But don't accept it. Your value as a spiritual being is, in, is vastly worth more than you being broken by that event, which shouldn't define your whole life. So where we are is we are victims being told by the rapist how we should respond, where to go, what the justice will be or won't be. That day is done because there are too many in an informed cabal who are tired of being victims and now seek to take natural justice by first organizing ourselves and having the vehicles, sovereign vehicles, to deal with our adversaries who are abusing us in the way that they are. And for the cases where it's not abuse, it might be just gentle oppression. We are not obligated to suffer it. I don't want to hear from collaborators who tell us it's better than it's ever been. So hold on. You used to hit me with a cricket bat and now you just slap me in my face and I'm obligated to accept that? No, I'm not. You're a collaborator and you're a collaborator because you are a paid stool. So your opinion has no value to me. You are a betrayer of our people for your 30 pieces of silver. And when you are isolated, you will then be cast aside. But because of the veracity of your own personal ambition, you don't see that. And your own greed and personal ambition is convincing you that you're going to be the one that is given the pinnacle. Thank you. If you could just kindly um, complete this statement. Um, my activism is defined by. My activism is defined by our need our very need that I look at on a daily basis. Um, my activism is defined by seeing our children bullied by racist teachers in a racist system, which we have no control over. My activism is informed by our lack of access to finance. My activism is informed by a local authority that we contribute to as taxpayers and don't receive our proportionate share of resources. My activism is informed by all of this and a hell of a lot more, which aren't imagined problems. They are very real needs. And also the abuses of over-policing where it isn't for our protection. It's to contain us from the rest of society and make examples of us. My activism is informed by all of these things in very real cases with human beings that I know and can touch and speak with on a daily basis who contact me. Powerful. Thank you very much. Those are all the questions. So um, really grateful for you taking the time to do that. Um, no, thank you. <laughs>